Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and more. So today we have a very interesting topic that is gum pads in periodontics. So we know gum pads is uh, alveolar process without teeth. So uh, it is present from the birth till six months. So let's get into the details of gum pads. So development of dentition is basically divided into four periods. One is pre-dental period that is from birth to six months. During that period there is no teeth. That is what we are studying today gum paths. The second one is deciduous dentition from the first tooth erupts that is deciduous lower central incisor until the period of first permanent tooth erupts that is lower central permanent incisor that is during six years so during that period only deciduous dentition is there so that period is known as deciduous dentition period mixed dentition is with both deciduous and permanent dentition that is 6 to 12 years by 12 the years all of the deciduous dentition will be exfoliated naturally and after that we have only permanent dentition so we have 20 deciduous teeth and 32 permanent teeth. Now let's move on to gum pads. So gum pads uh, is structure which is present in pre-dentate period. That is, which is refers to the period from birth to eruption of the first deciduous teeth in oral cavity. That is lower central incisor. So it erupts here. So gum pads are alveolar arches of an infant. This is the alveolar arches of an infant. So these are known as gum pads. So which is very firm, pink and resilient. And it is basically has two parts. That is labiobuccal portion and lingual portion. So these portions are divided by a dental groove that is the labiobuccal portion and the lingual portion is divided by something known as the dental groove and the shape of the gum pad it is horseshoe shape you can see the horseshoe shape in upper arch and a u shape in lower arch so it is basically divided into labiobuccal portion and lingual portion which is separating separated by something known as dental groove now let's see the upper gum pad so as i mentioned it is horseshoe shape it is divided into 10 segments by transverse groove so it has to accommodate 10 teeth First, total 20 teeth, 10 teeth in upper arch, 10 teeth in lower arch. I'm talking about deciduous dentition. So it has to accommodate 10 teeth. So it is divided into 10 segments by something known as transverse groove. So each groove, central incisor, lateral incisor on both sides, canines on both sides, first and second molars on both side so one side five segments and left side five segments total se 10 segments so these segments are divided by transverse group so dental group is different it is labiobuccal portion and lingual portion of gum pads separated by dental group this is a segments in upper and lower arch so we are talking about only upper arch so 10 segments divided by transverse groove and we have gingival groove that is the lingual portion is separated from palate by gingival groove and it is from alveolar uh, floor of the mouth by gingival groove so it is separated from palate by uh, gingival groove 
so the dental groove originates the dental groove originates from incisive papillae and extends backwards to touch the gingival groove in canine region so it extends backwards to touch the gingival groove at canine region so this is dental groove which originates from incisive papillae it goes backward like this it touches the uh, gingival groove here at canine region so lateral sulcus is nothing but the transverse groove which is present between canine and first molar so this is a transverse groove it is a uh, lateral sulcus yes uh, transverse groove but which is present between canine and first molar which is known as lateral sulcus so we've seen dental groove which separates uh, labiovacal or lingual portion and gingival groove which is touching the dental groove at canine region and lateral sulcus it is present between canine and first molar that is nothing but a transverse groove so lower gum pad is a u-shaped and it has an anterior portion averted to labial side and again it is also divided into 10 segments 5 left and 5 right the gingival groove separates the gum from floor of the mouth so gingival groove separates it from the floor of the mouth just like how it separated from the palate the upper arch from palate and dental groove running from backward and join the gingival groove at canine region it is joining the gingival uh, groove in the canine region that is a dental groove running backwards running backwards and joining the gingival groove at canine region and lateral sulcus is nothing but which is the transverse groove present between canine and first molar so these are the basic things about uh, gum pads upper and lower gum pads so basically upper gum pad is wider and longer when ap approximated there is a complete overjet which helps in suckling so at rest gum pads are uh, gum pads are separated by the tongue and the lateral sulcus of lower gum pads lies distal to that of upper and uh, overjet with uh, contact only at the first molar region so during function mandible moves vertically in anterior posterior direction and lateral moves, movements are basically absent so growth of gum pads uh, at birth uh, the width of gum, uh, gum pads are inadequate to accommodate all the incisors so growth of gum pad is rapid during first year after birth then more in transverse and labiovacal direction uh, labiovacal and transverse direction so basically we uh, clean the gum pads uh, from the first week of birth uh, using a um, small gauze two by two gauze uh, keeping between thumb and four fingers and wipe vigorously over the gum pads so we have uh, nowadays we have infant toothbrushes finger coats and wipes are available so uh, there are ma various things which are associated with gum pads which we have already covered that is natal teeth and neonatal teeth that is uh, early erupted teeth natal teeth something which present at birth neonatal is within 30 days uh, and uh, epulis uh, and also epstein pearls and bone nodules we have covered uh, in previous sessions uh, it's like a cyst formation uh, at the mid palatine raphe and over uh, the alveolar uh, mucosa and uh, rigafide disease also it is associated with alveolar uh, gum pads which is ulceration on the uh, ventral surface of stomach caused by the sharp edges of natal and neonatal teeth so these all are seen during the gum pads periods that is pre-dental period birth to six months and also eruption cyst is also there so uh, gum pads uh, is about a period where there is no tooth present in the oral cavity and it is 
separated by transverse groove and lateral sulcus is between canine and first molar which is horseshoe shape this is uh, u shape so some grooves are there which is a little bit confusing that is dental groove which is actually separating the labio buccal and lingual portion gingival groove which is separating uh, it is from palate or floor of the mouth so dental groove is different gingival groove is different transverse groove is different transverse groove is separating the 10 segments and the transverse groove between these two canine and first molar is lateral sulcus so dental grooves gingival groove and transverse groove so it is otherwise it is a very easy topic so it is commonly asked uh, asked question in university exam so i'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more thank you